Of all the prehistoric periods scientists have studied, nothing quite prepares you for just how weird death could get millions of years ago. I mean, humans are a very odd bunch when it comes to dying. We've got everything from auto accidents to accidentally choking on toast. But frankly, the fossil record shows us that bizarre deaths have been happening for way longer than we've been around. So yeah, we're talking about some of the strangest ways ancient creatures met their maker, preserved forever in stone like nature's own crime scene photos. And honestly, some of these stories are so wild you'd think I was making them up. Let's start with something that sounds like a bad B-movie, exploding fish. Not exactly what you'd expect to find fossilized, right? But in Wyoming's Green River Formation, paleontologists have discovered thousands of fish fossils that literally blew up after they died. Picture this. 50 million years ago, you've got this massive lake system teeming with herring-like fish called Diplomastis and Nydia. When these fish died, bacteria in their guts started producing gases, just like what happens today. But here's where it gets weird. These gases built up so much pressure that the fish essentially became biological grenades. The swim bladder, that little balloon-like organ that helps fish control their buoyancy, would inflate like crazy. In some species, there's actually a tube connecting the swim bladder to the fish's brain. So when all that gas pressure built up, it would literally blow the fish's head apart from the inside. We're talking about prehistoric fish, with their skulls exploded outward, their guts scattered, looking like they'd been hit by tiny depth charges. What's really fascinating is that these exploding fish fossils are so well preserved because they were buried incredibly quickly. The gases would rupture the fish, scatter their remains, and then, boom, rapid burial in fine sediment locked them in that exact moment of destruction. It's like a Polaroid of death, but made of stone. Now this next story involves one of the biggest scientific plot twists in recent paleontology. For decades, scientists thought they'd found the prehistoric equivalent of Pompeii in China's Yixian formation. Picture perfectly preserved dinosaurs, early birds, and mammals all frozen in lifelike poses, some sleeping peacefully, others locked in mortal combat, including a cat-sized mammal attacking a small dinosaur, stopped mid-fight. The obvious explanation seemed to be massive volcanic eruptions, pyroclastic flows of scorching ash that buried everything instantly, just like Mount Vesuvius did to Pompeii. Some fossils even showed what looked like charring. Case closed, right? Well, not exactly. In 2024, researchers took another look and realized something was off. See, when people died at Pompeii, they ended up in what's called a pugilistic pose, basically curled up defensively as their muscles contracted from the heat. But these Chinese fossils, they're tucked up all cozy like they're taking a nap. Plus, if you've got searing volcanic flows, goodbye feathers and fur. Yet these fossils preserve delicate soft tissues beautifully. So what actually happened? Turns out these animals probably died in burrow collapses. They were living in underground dens when the roof caved in, trapping them in their sleeping positions. The fine sediment that collapsed around them created perfect preservation conditions, sealing out oxygen and stopping decomposition. It's honestly way less dramatic than a volcanic apocalypse, but somehow more intimate, like stumbling across someone's bedroom from 120 million years ago. Speaking of death traps, let's talk about one of the most successful killing grounds in prehistoric history, the La Brea Tar Pits in what's now downtown Los Angeles. Between 50,000 and 10,000 years ago, natural asphalt was seeping up through the ground, creating these dark, sticky pools that looked like water to thirsty animals. Now, if you're a mammoth or a giant ground sloth, you wander over for a drink and whoops, you're stuck. The asphalt is like nature's superglue, and the more you struggle, the deeper you sink. But here's where it gets really diabolical. You're not dying quickly. You're just trapped there, bellowing and thrashing around. And what does that sound like to a saber-toothed cat? Dinner bell. So Smilodon fatalis, that's the scientific name for the famous saber-toothed cat, literally meaning deadly blade tooth, comes prowling over thinking it's hit the jackpot easy meal already immobilized. But the moment those seven-inch canines sink into their prey, the predator becomes just another victim of the tar. The statistics are pretty wild. Paleontologists have found over 2,000 individual saber-toothed cats at La Brea, along with around 4,000 dire wolves. 
That's why about 90% of the mammal fossils there are carnivores. They kept getting lured in by trapped prey and couldn't resist what looked like fast food. The asphalt preserved everything beautifully. We're talking bones that look like the animals died yesterday, complete with bite marks, healed injuries, even evidence of arthritis. One saber-toothed cat hip bone shows signs of hip dysplasia so clear that modern veterinarians can diagnose it using CT scans. But speaking of animals dying in the act, we've got to talk about one of the most famous fossils ever discovered, the fighting dinosaurs from Mongolia's Gobi Desert. This is a 75-million-year-old freeze frame of a deathmatch between a protoceratops — think mini triceratops — and a velociraptor. The scene is absolutely epic. The protoceratops has clamped down on the velociraptor's arm with its beak, while the raptor has driven its killing claw deep into the herbivore's throat. They're locked together in what was clearly their final moments, and somehow got preserved exactly like that. The big question is, what interrupted this prehistoric WWE match? The leading theories are pretty dramatic. Maybe they tumbled into a lake and drowned. Maybe a massive sandstorm buried them alive. Or perhaps a sand dune collapsed on top of them. Whatever it was happened fast enough that neither animal could escape their death grip on each other. What makes this fossil so incredible is that it captures behavior, actual predator-prey interaction frozen in stone. Usually, fossils just show us what animals looked like, not what they were doing. This is like having a nature documentary from the Cretaceous period, except the cameraman was geological time itself. Now let's go way back, 579 million years ago to be exact. This was during the mysterious Ediacaran period, when the first complex multicellular life was just figuring out how to exist. In Newfoundland, Scientists found what they're calling a nursery of baby rangimorphs, these bizarre frond-shaped organisms that look sort of like sea pen corals but are unlike anything alive today. These weren't exactly animals as we know them, but they were some of Earth's earliest complex life forms. And they had a baby problem. The fossil site preserves over 100 juvenile rangimorphs, all less than 3 centimeters long, many as small as 6 millimeters. Meanwhile, adult rangimorphs could reach up to 2 meters in length. What happened to all these babies? Volcanic ashfall, Pompeii style. But this time it really was sudden burial by volcanic debris. An underwater eruption on a nearby island sent a cloud of ash sinking down through the ocean, smothering this ancient nursery and preserving it perfectly. It's simultaneously one of the oldest and one of the youngest mass death events in the fossil record. The oldest because it happened so early in life's history. The youngest because all the victims were babies. There's something haunting about finding the fossilized remains of Earth's earliest attempt at complex life, cut short before these weird organisms even figured out what they were supposed to become. For our final story, Let's travel to Madagascar 70 million years ago, where paleontologists discovered what they call MAD0542, a mass grave containing multiple species of dinosaurs all mixed together. We're talking about everything from tiny bird-like dinosaurs to massive long-necked sauropods, all dead in the same place. This looked like a murder mystery, and the paleontologists had to play detective. Were these animals killed by a predator? Did they die all at once or over time? The clues were in the bones themselves and the rock surrounding them. The evidence pointed to a serial killer that struck repeatedly. Drought. Madagascar was going through severe dry periods where rivers turned into death traps. Animals would gather at the last remaining water sources only to find dried up riverbeds with pools that were too small or too alkaline to sustain life. As the drought progressed, corpses piled up in these ancient riverbeds. Then, when the rains finally returned, massive flash floods would sweep through, creating debris flows that buried all the remains together. The drought was the killer, but the flood was the undertaker, preserving the crime scene for 70 million years. What's really clever about this detective work is that scientists figured out the timeline by studying the bones for evidence of scavenging, weathering, and how long they'd been exposed before burial. It's like CSI Cretaceous period. So what do all these bizarre fossil deaths tell us? Well, for one thing, dying has always been weird. Whether you're a fish whose own gas kills you, a saber-toothed cat outsmarted by asphalt, or a dinosaur who picked the wrong watering hole, nature has always had creative ways of ending your story. But more importantly, 
These fossils show us that death and preservation are usually about being in the wrong place at the right time. The wrong place gets you killed, but the right time means perfect conditions for fossilization. Most animals that die just rot away and disappear forever. These unlucky few became immortal by accident. And honestly, that's kind of beautiful in a morbid way. These creatures' worst days became their ticket to scientific immortality. Every exploded fish, every tar pit victim, every drought casualty is now teaching us about ancient ecosystems, climate change, and evolution. Their bizarre deaths became our windows into deep time. It makes you wonder what future paleontologists might make of our own bizarre ways of dying. Though hopefully they won't have to explain why humans kept getting killed by things called selfies. Thanks for watching, and until next time, here on Before Fire.